Welcome back to Extravagant Fragrances here. So uh, uh, today I am going to talk a little bit about ratios when it comes to incense making. And uh, the reason why this is coming up is I had a subscriber who was asking about uh, his, his ratios when it comes to incense making uh, and the amount of dipropylene glycol that he used. Um, it was it was too little dipropylene glycol um so he had mentioned that he had uh one part utter and two parts dipropylene glycol and uh for those of you who understand the term utter if you don't understand let me explain but utter is used kind of loosely when it comes to like body oils and stuff like that um I understand it to mean, and for my Pakistani and Indian crowd, uh, and Bangladeshi crowd, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand Uttar to mean like a pure, pure oil, right? Um, almost to the level of absolutes, right? Like, like, like a pure agar wood or oud. Uh, essential oil that's what i understand uh utter to be or let's say like a pure jasmine like a pure jasmine absolute or a rose absolute this is what i understand utter to be which is like basically like a really pure um pure oil right uh also something like a let's say a pure sandalwood oil right um that's also from what i understand is an utter right and so so some of these fragrances like let's say um an oud or agar wood or uh let's say a sandalwood some of these uh oils can be can have a high viscosity to it that's very thick and so for that reason uh this guy sounds like he's trying to make a really premium incense stick and so, um, from what he's telling me, he's going two parts of dipro dipropylene glycol to one part of utter. And it's not sticking. He's saying it's not sticking. Well, I've done that before with really thick fragrances where I'm like, okay, I'm going to make this a real premium, you know, a real premium uh, incense stick, right? And it's going to be, you know, I'm only going to cut it you know only one or two times right and uh and it doesn't work out and the reason why is because the fragrance is so thick uh that it's not able to permeate into the unscented incense stick and so if it was me i would personally if i had if i had a fragrance to that thick that it would uh it would just kind of be like you know, you cut it once, you cut it twice, and it's still sticky. That's not what you want. Uh, I find that thicker fragrances like that, like let's say Arabian sandalwood, uh, Egyptian musk, you could cut it a few times over. Uh, if it's extremely thick, if you're dealing with an utter, you want to test it out. Because first of all, if you're using a pure utter, then most likely that fragrance is going to be expensive. And so you want to, you want to test, test that, uh, uh, do like a small batch of incense oil, right? Like take something like, I'd say like a little small one eighth ounce bottle, right? And get yourself one of these plastic bottles right here, right? And you do it, you do like your little ratios like that. You put like your, let's say, so for him, he's saying that the, uh, the dipropylene glycol uh he's putting two parts and one part utter i would probably stretch that out to to four or even maybe five parts of di dipropylene glycol and one part utter right take it do it on a small scale mix it up in something like this you know uh depending on how expensive that fragrance is it sounds like it's an expensive fragrance that he's trying to make his incense sticks out of. Uh, so I would break it down into something like that. And then um, then 
get, let's say, a little dropper, like a little flip cap, right? And get a piece of foil and kind of kind of put it on your finger and then just swipe it along the, uh, the stick and kind of drench it down a little bit. Let it sit, let it dry, test it out like that. Uh, and see how it soaks if it if it soaks up the the oil to the point where it looks like a regular stick later on and it dries up and it looks like a regular unscented stick then you know you're good to go and also you have to test it by burning it you have to see how well it's going to burn uh now you know this this uh subscriber mentioned he asked me for a pointer on how much should he cut it that's really up to you you have to really do a lot of testing because everybody's oils are different there's some oils that are lower quality than others there are oils that are higher quality than others right and so you you're gonna have to do some testing um, on all of your oils to find out what is the best ratio I find that most of my oils when I cut them uh, I can get away with the same amount of ratios with most of my oils, except except for, let's say something like patchouli. Patchouli, you can stretch it. The, like for me, my patchouli, I'm not speaking for everybody's patchouli because everybody's patchouli is different. But like the natural patchouli, I can stretch. Egyptian musk, I can stretch. And I prefer to stretch. The reason why is because like I said, it's a really thick fragrance. And if I don't stretch it enough, I'm going to end up with what looks like sap on my sticks, right? Same thing with Arabian sandalwood. It's very similar to Egyptian musk. If I don't stretch my Arabian sandalwood, it's going to stick like sap. And uh, uh, the positive, the upside of stretching a thick fragrance is that uh, I find that thicker fragrances tend to not dry out so fast. They tend to uh, keep a longer shelf life uh, when you make incense sticks out of them. So that's the one one thing to consider when you're making uh, incense sticks with thicker fragrances. Um, I would probably say what else uh the dragon's blood i could probably stretch that a, a a good amount the um um frankincense and myrrh i can stretch that out a pretty good ways um more than the average uh oil that i use and it's just because it's just a really really premium <clears throat> um frankincense and myrrh uh now another thing to consider is that some some fragrances because of how pure it is uh you might want to uh stretch it further because i find that if i do let's say a one-to-one -one, right or you know two parts dpg one part of uh, fragrance um sometimes uh it actually will annoy the customer or it will annoy whoever you give this incense stick to. Like I, I have an aunt who loves burning incense sticks. And um, I'm thinking I'm doing her a favor by <laughs> making a, a real premium stick. Like, okay, here's just, I only put a little bit of DPG, uh, like one to one or whatever, something like that. And she's like, oh, she's like, are you gonna bring it over those sticks that I gotta like burn just for a couple minutes and then put out? So that's something that you, you should also consider. Uh, now, the same sticks that I, let's say I gave to my aunt, for example, um, those, those sticks might do well uh, if you have them sitting on the shelf for long, long periods of time. So I'm talking like, let's say, you know, uh, six months to a year, right? If you, if you plan on having sticks that are just gonna sit for that long, then you might want to consider doing a really premium, you know, let's say one to one ratio. Right. Uh, but if it's something that, you know, you're turning around and you're doing high volume, you have a lot of foot traffic. Uh, 
then I, I, I liken incense sticks to almost being like a baker, right? Uh, if you bake a loaf of bread fresh and it doesn't have all these preservatives and all that stuff in it, and, you know, you want to sell that bread as soon, almost as soon as you get done making it, right? Because it's fresh. Uh, it has a short uh, shelf life and you don't want the customer to taste, you know, bread that's been sitting on the shelf for, you know, two, three days, right? You want to get it out. You want to sell it while it's fresh. And that's kind of how I like in that the incense sticks too, right? Uh, when it comes to, let's say a high volume, if you're doing high volume, you can get away with cutting your, uh, your formula a few times over where it's like you didn't you didn't lose the fragrance it's still there but if it sits long enough if it sits you know um let's say for a couple months it's going to lose it's just going to everything's going to dry out and you're going to lose the smell right you don't want that either um you want it to where okay it, it can sit for a month you know maybe two months this is my personal preference if i'm going to be storing sticks that are sitting for that long, uh, then I want the formula to be strong enough where it's not going to lose the uh, the smell or the scent, you know, within a uh, one to two month period, right? So you want to be able to um, move them quickly because people who are, you know, like to burn incense sticks every day, uh, you know, they're going to be able to capture that scent, uh, within let's say a month if they go through incense sticks in about a month and they're that type of person that burns sticks like that then you want you want to be able to have enough fragrance there that they're gonna uh still be able to capture that right uh, and that it's not gonna be like it's like they need to be able to smell it like there, there's a term called like that throw that throw needs to be there which is how the fragrance it fills the space that they're in it needs to be there um, if you're making, if you're stretching it out, your your formula a few times over, um, then that needs to be there for the customer to smell, right? Uh, so yeah, you don't want to annoy them with a super premium overpowered, you know, formula if it's going to be a high volume customer. Um, but like I said, if it's something that's going to be sitting on the shelf for a long period of time, you might want to consider going with a stronger formula. Uh, I, for my personal use, I will make like a super premium, you know, 50, 50, um, type of ratio for my house, right. For the house. Right. Uh, and because I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm going through different incense sticks, you know, every day. <coughs> So that's something to think about. Another thing I wanted to include in this video also was uh, the subscriber also mentioned uh, that he can smell the DPG. Um, you shouldn't be smelling DPG. If you're smelling DPG, it's possible that you have the wrong kind of DPG. There, there are different types of DPG. I don't know all of them, but I know there are other types of dipropylene glycol. Uh, the one that I use... Uh, here at Extravagant Fragrances is the uh, fragrance grade low odor, uh, which it should be called no odor because I don't I don't smell anything. It's just a to me it's an odorless, uh, clear um, solvent, right? And uh, I use it I use it um, for all my incense making. I use it for all the like the incense burning oil. So that's um, the kind of dipropylene glycol you want to use. I'll leave links here in the video um, down below. Uh, if you want the dipropylene glycol wholesale, I sell it wholesale. Um, and so that's what you want to be using. Don't don't cheap out just because you see a dipropylene glycol. That's like, oh, it's cheaper than the than the fragrance grade. No, get the right stuff. Otherwise, you're going to end up messing up your incense stick. So that's my uh, word of advice, uh, my pointers. If you have any questions, uh, put it down in the comment section below. Uh, and if you have any um, uh, things to share about your own incense making uh, experiences, put it down in the comment section as well. And so uh, 
I think that's it. Uh, I'll see you guys again, hopefully soon. And uh, take care, everybody.